Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lemonade Crime. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for chapter 12 because I want to see what happens next. So we just had a lot of excitement and a lot of embarrassment for Evan and Jesse. Let's see what happens with chapter 12, and this is called the Sixth Amendment. Sixth Amendment, the part of the United States Constitution that explains the rights of anyone who was accused of a crime and brought to trial, including the right to legal counsel. Jesse whispered, the prosecution rests. And she and Evan went back to their seats. Evan kept his eyes nailed to the ground. He didn't trust himself to look at Jesse. If he did, he knew that all his anger was going to spill over like lava pouring out of a crack in the earth's crust. He'd been humiliated in front of the entire fourth grade. And even though he knew that Jesse hadn't done it on purpose, it was still all her fault. If she hadn't called him as a witness, if she hadn't made David the judge, if she hadn't given Scott Spencer that stupid arrest warrant in the first place, none of this would have happened. David banged his gavel three times. Will the lawyer for the defense please step forward? Evan saw Scott twist his head around and look at the parking lot. Oh, we gotta wait just a couple more minutes, said Scott, matter-of-factly. My mom's not here yet. If she doesn't come, said Paul, does Scott have to forfeit? David flipped through his cards. Jesse, does Scott forfeit if his mom doesn't come? Here she is, shouted Scott, jumping up from his ball. I told you, I told you. He turned to Jesse. Now you're going to see how it's done by a real lawyer. She's going to make you look like a fool. Scott ran off to the parking lot where a large gray SUV was pulling up to the curb. Evan watched as Scott ran up to the car and leaned in at the open window, talking with his mom. Scott turned around and pointed at all the kids sitting in the courtroom. Evan could just barely see Mrs. Spencer, her hands on the wheel, the engine of the car still running. Then Scott stepped back from the car and it drove away. Scott came walking back and sat down on his basketball. He shrugged, but Evan could tell it was an act. She can't stay, said Scott. She's got a big meeting, real stuff, not kid stuff. He shrugged again and looked straight ahead at David, avoiding everyone else's eyes. So, said David, what do we do now? Everyone in the courtroom turned to Jesse, who had been keeping quiet ever since she sat down. Evan looked at Jesse. She wasn't smiling, and that surprised him. After all, this meant they won, right? At least that's how it worked in basketball. If the other team didn't show up or didn't have enough players, then they forfeited the game. That meant your team won automatically. Usually, Evan hated forfeit games, even if it meant winning. He'd rather play and lose than win by forfeit. But this time, Evan would take a win any way he could get it. The image that had been haunting him for days of standing up at morning meeting and apologizing to Scott began to fade and a new one took its place. Evan playing with his new Xbox 2020 with all his friends over at his house. Jesse said, David, you say, will the lawyer for the defense please step forward? And then Scott says, 
well, whatever he wants to say in his own defense. And then he says the defense rests, and that's it. And then the verdict, said Sally Knight, who was in the jury box. Then we vote and give the verdict. Right, said Jesse glumly. What was her problem, wondered Evan. They were sure to win if Scott had no defense lawyer. Ahem, <clears throat> David cleared his voice. Will the lawyer for the defense please step forward? Everyone turned to look at Scott, but it was a voice from the back of the courtroom that broke the silence. That would be me. Megan stood up from the audience and walked to the front of the courtroom. What? At first, Evan thought he must have heard wrong. Did Megan Morarty just say that she was going to defend Scott Spencer? You can't do that, said Evan, jumping up from his seat. You're, you're, he wanted to shout, you're supposed to be on my side, not his. But he couldn't say that, not in front of the whole fourth grade. Hey, shouted David, banging his gavel once. Order in the court. Plaintiff, sit down. If you keep making a disturbance, I'll have you thrown out of court. Oh, right, like you could, said Evan, but he sat down on his basketball anyway. Jesse, said David, holding up his watch, it's 3.30. I've got to go in 10 minutes. Is this allowed? Jesse nodded her head. Yes, it's fair. Evan couldn't believe it. Was this really happening? Was the girl he was in love with about to destroy his one and only chance for revenge against his sworn enemy? Megan turned to Scott. Do you still not want a girl lawyer? Once again, Scott shrugged. You're all I got. I guess it's okay. All right, said Megan. This won't take long. Can I call my first witness? David nodded, and Megan moved to the front of the courtroom. And that's the end of chapter 13. Whoops, chapter 12. End of chapter 12. Tomorrow's chapter 13. Getting excited now. So why do you think that Jesse had to say it was fair? to let Scott have Megan as his attorney. Do you remember? This chapter was about the Sixth Amendment. Everyone has a right to have somebody defend them, so she knew it would only be fair. Okay, tomorrow come back and we will get to chapter 13. Can't wait to see ya. Bye for now.